Hello, my name is John Mill. I'm from Harley Street Hypnosis and I also work in Sutton, Surrey. I made this recording to talk to you a little bit about boxing and the psychology side. It has been said that boxing is around 90% mental and 10% physical, which is quite a statement and it can be questioned. But I thought I'd talk to you a bit about the mind and if you're listening to this, maybe you are a boxer or someone who's thinking about it or maybe someone who is interested in some kind of sport like this. When you think about your mind, we talk about it in hypnotherapy and psychology as the inner world. So generally, what is going on in your inner world is often reflected in a mirror version in your outer world. So I wonder if you've ever thought about that. It's almost like what you think about becomes your truth, whether you think about something positive or negative, it tends to happen outside. We also have beliefs in ourselves. We have beliefs in our capabilities, in our abilities, things that we know we can do really well. But also we have irrational beliefs and we have mistaken beliefs. So if we really believe in our mind subconsciously that we cannot do something, then something will stop us. So if you think about your inner world and your outer world, maybe you can think about the days that go by and things that you think about things that happen outside and I wonder if you've thought about your day and expressed it out loud said to people do you know what I'm going to have a terrible day today and generally you do right you have that bad day you say God work's going to drag and it does it drags because you are saying it's going to you are subconsciously telling yourself that this will happen, and it does. Now imagine boxing, going into the ring. Everyone around you telling you that you will win. Everyone believing that you will win. But deep down, inside, very subconsciously, a little part of you imagines that you are going to lose. Maybe there's a part of you that cannot see yourself having your hand raised by the ref at the end. Maybe you don't know how you're going to win. And so you go into the ring with this belief tucked away, embedded deep in your mind. And what happens when you take a punch that sways you a little bit? What happens when you lose your footing a little bit? What happens then? Do you start to listen to that belief, almost waiting for it to happen? Now I wonder if you could imagine stepping into a boxing ring and just imagining that ring as a square of excellence. Stepping into that ring and only imagining winning. Only imagining success. You've taken away from your mind any distractions, any inhibitions, any worries, any fears. And all you have in your mind is success nothing else. In your inner world, you believe, imagine you are going to win. And your outer world can reflect that. 
Now, I wonder if you've ever seen a image of a brain and how it almost looks like two fists side by side. And there is a lot of discussion as to whether we have a left brain versus a right brain. And it's said that the left side of our brain is to do with logic, analysis, facts, mathematics, work, stuff like that. And the right side of our brain is to do with our creativity, our imagination, our intuition, feelings, visualizations, and stuff like that. That's the side of our brain what we often daydream with. So I wonder if you've ever thought about left brain, right brain. Now a while ago I was in a restaurant and on the table of that restaurant next to the menu was a small advert and it said give in to pecan pudding. Give in to pecan pudding. Now, the give in to part was appealing to my right brain, the creative part. Give in to. And the pecan pudding was appealing to my left brain, which was the facts. They do pecan pudding. And obviously below it was a picture of the pecan pudding. So you've got that part of that give into which is drawing my attention in. And then you've got the fact below it. Also there's something else interesting here, which is what we call in hypnotherapy a presupposition. And that is that give in to presupposes that I already like pecan pudding and maybe I used to like it. And all I have to do is give in to it again. So it sort of tricks my brain into becoming interested in it. And then of course below it is the picture, which could be a pile of shit. But I already have ordered it by now, right? Now, if you think about your left brain and right brain in boxing, something I like to do is think about the training as the work. And then the performance is the pleasure. So I like to use the left brain for the training, for the road work for the sparring, for the focus, for everything you do. And then on the day of the performance, your right brain. So what we can do is, using hypnosis, is we can allow a boxer to go into his mind and to find instances of when he perhaps sparred the best he's ever sparred. It's almost like you can flick through images in your mind or a movie and you can find those perfect moments where you sparred the best, where you perhaps had the best focus or you got your shots off just right. I would get that boxer to take his left fist and just anchor it onto his right shoulder. Now an anchor is something that the mind can remember and it can be something as simple as touching someone's arm, saying something in a slightly lower tone or perhaps even waving your hand in the air as you say a word that person will pick that up and store it away in the mind. So 
as the boxer remembers a time when, as he done his road work, he had more stamina. Maybe he enjoyed it more. Maybe he did that little bit extra. He takes his left fist and just touches it onto his right shoulder and stores that feeling, that moment, that image away. And as a boxer continues out of session to go through his work, he continues at every moment he feels that it went perfectly or as best as it possibly could. He takes that left fist and just anchors it to that right shoulder. And then on the night of his performance, he can actually bring back all of those memories by simply taking that left fist again and touching that shoulder again just before he starts that fight or maybe in between rounds or in the dressing room just to bring about all those experiences and we call this stacking the anchors so taking an anchor of focus an anchor of stamina an anchor of something else stacking them one over the other until you have nothing but success in your mind and just one more thing to think about I want you just to think for a moment about something in life that you do well think about something that you're really good at now sometimes people say I'm not good at anything You can be good at driving. You can be good at cooking. You can even be good at tying your laces. Think of something that you are good at and you do it really well. Now one thing, when you do this thing that you're good at, is that... You have no image in your mind or feeling perhaps of failure. So, for example, if you were good at holding functions or parties, every time you thought about throwing a party or a function or an event, nowhere in your mind would you ever imagine all of the guests becoming sick with the food, people fighting, everything going wrong, the whole night being ruined. You may have slight thoughts about things that could go wrong, but quickly you will dispel them and carry on with your plan. If you are good at riding a push bike, you won't imagine as you get on it falling off and smacking your head on a tree. That's because when we're good at something, we actually have a belief that we're good at it. And we take out of our mind all the reasons, excuses, that could make it go wrong. And then we just do it. And most things that you're really good at, if you think about things that you are absolutely passionate about, one of the reasons you do it so well is because you enjoy it. You absolutely love it. So think about it. Because when I work with people that maybe want to lose weight or want to stop smoking... One of the things they do most of all is that they they use a thing called willpower. They believe that willpower is what they need. Well, the thing about willpower is that you focus on that thing more than ever. So that person will say, this week I must not put on weight. This week I don't want to put on weight. Or... This week I must not think about cigarettes. 
I don't want to smoke. And when you think about it, all they're thinking about is food or fags. Think about the word don't. We don't have an image in our mind for the word don't. Have you ever told a child, don't touch that? All they hear is, touch that. Another thing I say in therapy is stop using the word must because it doesn't have a date and it's just a dream, right? I say stop masturbating and just do it. Just get on with it. So imagine when you box. Imagine enjoying the thing that you are amazing at. Imagine knowing that you're amazing at it. And imagine taking away any fears, any distractions you have from winning and just enjoying what you do and having a supreme focus on only success. And then you have nothing left but winning. Thanks for listening and I hope this has brought up a few questions in your head, perhaps.